preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. A special good evening to you, our online family. Welcome back to another Sunday evening service where we will be continuing with the book of Daniel. Last week, we looked at Daniel chapter 2. And this evening, we will be looking at Daniel chapter 3. Remember to like and share the program so others can be blessed. Before we begin this evening's program, let's put ourselves in a manner for prayer as we ask God's guidance for this evening's program. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the breath of life. As we come before you this evening, we ask that you forgive us from all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we want to leave the program in your hands at this time. We ask that you take charge and control. Be with everyone viewing here this evening. Bless their hearts so that they can learn something tonight and be drawn closer to you. Thank you, Lord, for your protection. Thank you for always being there and for providing. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, this is a time where you can make a joyful noise unto the Lord as the choristers lead us in song service. Welcome, everyone, back to our Sunday night service. Join us as we sing hymn 294, Power in the Blood.
for Jesus your King. There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. For a second hymn, we'll sing 388, Don't Forget the Sabbath. from the old hymnal Holy Day Jehovah's Rest
will change our past through the whole six thousand years. Welcome, 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 welcome. Glad we hear His presence blessed. Tis the great Jehovah's rest. Thus I search and wait. a wonderful song service. Thank you, choristers. If you are just joining us, we are happy that you are here for our Sunday evening service, and we are looking at the book of Daniel, chapter 3. At this time, Pastor Edward Guillaume will come right now to intercede on our behalf. I invite you all, wherever you are, to Bow your heads with me as we approach the throne of grace at this time. The eternal loving, gracious Father, we give you thanks and praise, glory and honor, worship and thanksgiving for your goodness and your love towards us, even throughout the day. We thank you, Lord, for this platform whereby we can come to worship and to proclaim your everlasting gospel to a dying world. In the special way, O oh God, we give you thanks for this evangelistic series on Daniel. And Lord, we pray that even as we seek you, that you will have mercy, forgive us, cleanse us, wash us, and make us rightfully yours, so that even as we worship you this evening, We'll worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, in a special way, I lift up all those who are on the platform at this moment. I pray that your Holy Spirit will minister, will touch, will speak to each and every one of us in a personal way and draw us to you. I pray, God, for all those who will tune in and will listen to this broadcast at a later date, that as your words will be spoken tonight, as songs will be sung, as encouragement will be given, we pray, Father, that they will see that urgent need, those who have not yet given their lives to you, will see that urgent need to surrender, to give their lives to you before it is eternally too late. So, Father, I pray for the proceedings of the night. May everything, Lord, be done to your name, honor, and glory. May be done decently and in order. I lift up the preacher in a special way that you will anoint him. So as he speaks your word, as he proclaims your word, as he explains your word, oh God, that your Holy Spirit will use him in a mighty way that you will put the words in his mouth and the meditation in his heart. May it be acceptable to you and be a blessing even to all the viewers and listeners. I pray, God, that tonight that some soul will surrender, will yield to you, and will come to you. So, Father, in a special way, I lift up the people of this nation, those who are struggling in one way or the other, those who have difficulty coping with the times that we are living in, we pray, Father, that you will grant peace and comfort and assurance and hope that even as we live in this perilous time, in these last days, when things are showing a downward turn, we pray, God, that you know persons will look up to you as a blessed hope. So we thank you, O God, for all that you have done in our lives and what you will continue to do. 
And we ask your blessings upon the church. That even as we continue, Lord, to rally your cause and to advance your cause and to preach the everlasting gospel into all the world. You said in your words that this gospel shall be preached into all the world as a witness. And then the end shall come. We pray, God, that you will save men and women, boys and girls, for eternity. And we look forward to that time, O oh God, when you shall come. And uh, you will put an end to this wicked and sinful world. And you will restore all things. May each and every one of us, because of the decision that we will make even tonight, will be able to see you face to face and to live with you forever and ever. Is our prayer with thanksgiving. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, let everybody say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Amen and Amen. Our scripture reading this evening is taken from Daniel chapter 3, verses 14 to 18. Daniel chapter 3, verses 14 to 18. You will listen while I read. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcima, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast in the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God shall deliver you out of my hands? Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Good is the reading of God's word. At this time, we'll now have a special singing. So listen attentively as you meditate on the words of the song. Every road I walked had led to nowhere And everything I tried had turned out wrong It seemed I lost my reason To get up every morning For I had lost all hope and lost my song Circumstances said I will not make it But that was all before I met the man Thank you, Jesus He put his arms around me I heard him say, forgiven And I knew I'll never be the same again then and there, settled and done, then and there, victory won, no more walking on my own, no more facing life alone, no more struggling with the guilt and the
what beautiful singing this evening. Thank God for the message in this song. Glory be to God. Now we have come to the part where we learn more about Daniel chapter 3. And this evening we have with us Pastor Frankie Noel. And he will explain to us more on this book. Pastor Noel, I now turn over the time to you. Good evening to everyone. It is indeed a real joy to be here this evening to speak to you from God's Word. And this evening, my message is entitled, Trust God Even If You Cannot Trace Him. And my message comes from the book of Daniel chapter 3. It's rather an interesting chapter of the three Hebrew boys who have demonstrated what implicit trust and faith in God is all about. At this moment, I want you to let us have a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, as we get into your word, speak your word to us today, I pray in Jesus' name. The wise man Solomon said in Proverbs, the third chapter, verses 6 and 7, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy part. The word trust is a very important word. Uh, it means belief and confidence in. It also means reliance on the truth. Uh, so that's what trust is all about. I, I want us to look at a, a very interesting narrative found in Daniel chapter 3. And I'm going to read in your hearing from verse 1. Daniel 3. And the Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubic. Now that's 60 cubits. And one cubit is uh, a foot and a half, 18 inches so you multiply 18 by 60 and you get 1,080. Then you divide it by 12 and you get 90 feet. It was an enormous image. And then the Bible says 6 cubic. So you multiply that and uh, you get 9 feet. So the height was 90 feet and the width of that image was 9 feet. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king sent together together the prince, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of this image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, and the treasurers, and the counselors, and the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And uh, they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now, uh, one author commenting on the image said that it was placed at the most strategic point in Babylon, and the plain of Jura. So looking from any direction, people can see that image. It was made of pure gold. Remember, it is 90 feet tall, and the width is 9 feet. And one commentator said, when the morning sun uh, falls on this image, it reflects and it glitters. And Nebuchadnezzar wanted to portray himself as the God of the world. But the Bible tells us here, in Daniel chapter 3 from verse 13, then Nebuchadnezzar in his fury, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought them, these men, before the king. Verse 14 says, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? What a way to inquire. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods? Now worship the golden image which I have set up. You know, these three boys, they were Jewish boys. And the Jews, they, 
they uh, believe in the Ten Commandments. And one of them says, Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. And another one says, That thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not worship them, nor bow down before them. Verse 15 says, Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sock, uh, the sock but, the, the palm tree, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour in the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Now, I want you to understand that King Nebuchadnezzar had sole power and authority in his hands. He's not like President Biden who has to go to Congress. He can make his decision at the spear of the moment. So that's why he said, um, you would be cast in uh, the burning fiery furnace at this moment. Verse 16 says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, notice, they did not address him as the king. They said to him, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Verse 17 says, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. In essence, they're saying, let us suppose that our God decides not to save us from getting into the fire, but mark this down. We are not going to bow down to your image. You see, statistics shows that every seventh generation loses its organizational roots. So you check seventh generation in your lineage, and you would realize that the things that you used to hold sacred, the seventh generation no longer hold it sacred, like the Sabbath, like returning tithes, like the Ten Commandments, and like uh, going to church and giving God praise. They wouldn't hold it as sacred. Every seventh generation questions the organizational roots. But the Bible tells us 10,000 people stood on the plain of Jura. Three men, three men stood still. The decree went out and uh, there was a howl that went out and stayed at the sound of the music. Every man, every boy, and every girl should bow to the image of King Nebuchadnezzar. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we will not bow. In verse 18. It is all right to make fanciful speeches when the angels are around. But there were no angels around. Saying, you will not bow. But there were no angels. They did not have Matthew chapter 28 verses 20. Notice that these men did not have the New Testament. Which says, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. They did not have Mark 13. Which talks about snakes and vipers would not bite you. They did not have them. Did Nebuchadnezzar do the right thing? There are some people, when people disagree with them, they burn them. And that's what Nebuchadnezzar did. The three men decided not to bow, and Nebuchadnezzar decided to throw them in the burning fiery furnace. There are some people, if you disagree with them, they would burn you with a tongue. They would burn the church board down if the church board take a decision that is contrary to what they think. Burn the pastor if the pastor and the elders took a decision that they are not in agreement with. They build up their own fiery furnace. You forget 
that God has sent Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in your church to stop the fire from burning down the church. Every now and then, the devil show his ugly head in our lives. And uh, with our bad behavior. But I want us to understand something here tonight. When you put your trust in God, it is his delight to come true for you. These three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the presence of King Nebuchadnezzar, dignitaries, they stood for what was right. And Nebuchadnezzar was blue vexed. Notice that Daniel was not there. Daniel is going to get his fiery furnace in chapter 6 in the lion's den. And uh, one commentator commenting says, the reason why Daniel was not there, King Nebuchadnezzar knew that Daniel was not going to bow down to the image. And so to save him from that embarrassment, he had loved Daniel. He sent Daniel on an errand. Thinking that in the absence of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would bow to his image. So when you put God first, God is going to come true. They put him first, and you know, God can decide that he can come true by preventing Nebuchadnezzar to throw those men in the burning fiery furnace. But God has the power, even though he allowed them to throw the men into the fire, God can still get into the fire and protect you. So, I want us to understand here, when you, when you put your trust in God, it is his delight to come true for you. Let us tell the world that we are serving a God who meets us in the fiery furnace and cool the flames uh, of our fears. The song says, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross. And whatever the situation, whatever the circumstances, as believers in Christ, we must stand up for Jesus. Daniel 3.25 says, he says, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt. And the fort is like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar knew that they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. But when he looked, he saw a foot one, and he said that the men were moving up and down in the fire as though they have no hurt. The Bible says in Isaiah 43 and verse, and verse 2, the Bible says, when you go through the fire, you will not be burnt. Because God is going to be with you. So Nebuchadnezzar, in my own thinking, must have decided to count. And he said, one, two, three. But I'm seeing an extra one. He said, all right, let me count again. Three, two, one. But I'm still seeing an extra one. He said, let me count again. Uh, two, one, three. But all how Nebuchadnezzar count, Nebuchadnezzar is seeing an extra one. And he said that the fourth one looked. As the Son of God. And let me say it to you. Jesus Christ was here before he was born. When Jesus was born as a babe in Bethlehem, Jesus, that was uh, the God-man. That was the one that became man. But let me tell you, Jesus was there from the very creation of this world. So he made an entrance in the fiery furnace. And I guess, you know, uh, thinking about it, that uh, God and Jesus, Father and Son, must have had a discussion. And let's look at Daniel chapter 3 and verse 27. And he says, and the princes, the governors and the captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men. God manifested himself, not only to Nebuchadnezzar, but to all the great men of Babylon, showing to these great men that there is one greater than they are, and that one is Jesus. And so the Bible tells us here, and they saw the men upon whose body the fire had no power. Nor was the hair of their head cinched, neither were their coats changed, 
Now the smell of fire had passed on them. You get into a plane where people are smoking and you're sitting close by and the smoke, smoke get all into your hair, get all into your clothes. And after you come from the plane, you smell as though you are the one smoking. But the Bible says that God says that he's going to deliver them and they should not even smell, smell like smoke. Hmm. Uh, wash me in glory, God. Wash away all my sins. And when we meet in glory, we will never know that I have been a sinner. You see, I am going to walk through the fiery furnace of this earth clean all over. You know, many years ago, the communists were taking over all over the world. They were taking over Africa. They were taking over Ethiopia. And we had an academy in Ethiopia. And news got to the people, the students and the professors, that they were coming to take over our, uh, our school. And so a couple of teachers and a couple of students went home because they knew this is not a Bible story. This is the real thing because they have lost some of their, their immediate family through the communists. They came in at 4 o'clock in the morning in the dark night. They knock at the doors and they haul out students from their dormitories and, and teachers. And they had all of them out in the courtyard. And uh, when they put them out into the courtyard... The captain said to the students, soldiers, he said to the soldiers, stand wrong with your Soviet-made guns. And he said to the students, your Christian flag is dumb. We are hoisting the communist flag. And we want you to denounce your faith in your Christian belief. And we want you to accept and pledge your allegiance to the communists. The soldiers move aside, but nobody moved. He raised his voice and he said, maybe I was not clear. The soldiers took the position of execution. And the captain said, I said, the flag is here. You must step forward one by one. To, otherwise, you would be shot. Then he gave the command to be ready and fire, but nobody moved. There were young people. The soldiers were uncomfortable. And the captain saw that he was losing the grips and the situation. Then he made it more difficult. He took the communist flag and he bring it right over where they were standing. And he said, you are standing before the communist flag. If anyone should step out and move over to the wall, you are saying that you are denouncing the communist flag, and you would be shot at sight. Nobody moved. And then eventually, a young man by the name of Joshua D. Kelly moved over. Then his brother, Joshua D. Kelly, their father was the president of one of the conferences in Africa. And before you know it, over 500 Plus, students and teachers were standing over. And, you know, the, the commander said he was crying, tears in his eyes. He went over to Joshua D. Kelly and he said, I have never seen such faith demonstrated in all my life. Joshua D. Kelly said to him, Sir, if you, have, if you had asked me, to climb the mountains of Ethiopia to declare my faith, I would have still been walking to declare my faith in Jesus. The captain said, you don't understand. Remember, Nebuchadnezzar, God spoke to Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 1. When the Daniel and his friends, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego decided that they would not defile themselves with the king's meat. In Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. And they were given vegetarian diet. And they were given water and oatmeal to drink. And for three years when they were tested, 
They were proven to be ten times wiser and ten times smarter than the Babylonian. Nebuchadnezzar realized that the God of these boys are the true and living God, but yet still he had in his heart. In Daniel chapter 2, God spoke to Nebuchadnezzar again when God gave him a dream. And God allowed him to forget the dream. And God troubled him. He called in his, all his soothsayers and, and his magicians and the Chaldeans and all the wise men to see if they can interpret the dream and remind him of the dream. And the men said, "For you have to tell us the dream. But God was able to reveal the dream to Daniel. While they were worrying and they were fasting, Daniel went to bed. And before he went to bed, Daniel spoke to his God. And he told it to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they prayed. And God gave him the interpretation. And the interpretation God gave him, the image, this big image that I talk about, 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide, Nebuchadnezzar decided that he would make an image a pure goal, indicating that his kingdom would last forever. And he would ask for all his people to worship that image. So God spoke to Nebuchadnezzar again in chapter 3. When the three Hebrew boys were thrown in the burning fiery furnace. And he saw the fourth one. And yet still Nebuchadnezzar beat his chest. Isn't it I this great Babylon that I have built. I want us to understand something here. The captain said to Joshua, I went to school at this school. He was a past student of our school. He said, I, I grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist. Then he dropped his knees in front of the student's student body and he said, I want you all to pray for me. Nebuchadnezzar the king built an image of God. He wanted the people to accept the image as God. But I want you to understand here, some of us are building images on the plane of our ego. As the song says, take the name of Jesus with you. Father, I want to pray for those who have been building golden images on the plane of their ego. I, I want to pray tonight because somebody just needs courage. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. To not bow down. And to say no to the devil. You know, uh, I want somebody to say no to an affair. Somebody else's wife and somebody else's husband. Just like Joseph said no to Potiphar's wife. How can I do such, commit such a great sin and sin against my maker? I, I want somebody to say no to the cigarette that you have been smoking for years that are destroying your, your body and all the important vital organs of your body. I want somebody to say no. You see, I want I want somebody who have not been returning tithes for years to say no to the devil and to return your tithe. What the Bible says, God will open up the windows of heaven and there shall not be room enough to receive it. I want us to understand not to bow down to the things of this world. To apologize somebody here, somebody here tonight, you need to apologize to somebody that you have not been apologizing to for a number of years. Maybe it's your wife. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's your children. I don't know. But, but you need to say no. You need to say no. You need to stop undermining another person's office in church. And you need to look in the mirror and say, it's me, it's me, O Lord. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, O oh Lord. It's Frankie Noel standing in the need of prayer. Let us know. Let us know that not bowing down means a fiery furnace. 
when you stand up for what is right, the devil don't like it. He don't like you either. But let me say it. When you stand up for what is right, God is always on your side. Remember, God can save you from the fire. But if God decided to allow you to go in the fire, God has the power to quench that fire and to save you while you are in the fire. So I believe, I believe that God, Jesus, and the Father, they had a talk. And, uh, and the Father must have said to Jesus, these three boys... In the midst of all this power, in the midst of King Nebuchadnezzar and all his dignitaries, they stood up for God, for us. And so we can't let them down. If we allow Nebuchadnezzar to burn these boys, the people would go with the idea that Nebuchadnezzar is the God of this world. We want to show to the people that Nebuchadnezzar's statue and his image, and Nebuchadnezzar himself and his ego, he's not the true and living God. We want to defy him in the presence of all his friends. So God must have said, what are we going to do? And, and, and they come up with a plan. They said, you know what? We're going to let them toss them in the, in the fire. And, and after they toss them, Jesus said, I'm going to be with them. And once Jesus is in the fire, the fire cannot quench them. And no wonder why Nebuchadnezzar saw the fourth one. In verse 16, chapter 3, verse 16, Daniel 3, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. We are not mixing bones. We know whom we believe. We should not have no other gods before the true and living God. We should not bow down to any graven images. We know. So there is no if about it. We are not going to bow down. Mark it down. We are not going to bow down. Where are you throw us in the fire? So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is it. And let me add, more than able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And I loved the, how he ended. And, and, he, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Mark that down. You see, they must have heard another voice in heaven saying, if you bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's image, then you would escape Nebuchadnezzar's fire. But in the final analysis, you would not ex escape the fires of God. And when the Bible talking about the end of time and the fires, the Bible says the element shall melt with fervent heat. And they decided if we, are to be, if we are to burn, we are not going to burn in God's fire. We prefer to burn in Nebuchadnezzar's fire. And so verse 17 says, if it be so. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O God. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods. Now worship the golden image which thou hast set up. If you want courage, you need to stand up for Jesus. Your fiery furnace may be to live with an unbelieving husband or unbelieving wife. Maybe that's your fiery furnace. Your fiery furnace may be to live with a stubborn child that is very disrespectful. But that's maybe your fiery furnace. Your fiery furnace may be to cope with a troublesome neighbor. You don't have peace in the neighborhood. But maybe, maybe that's your fiery furnace. If you, if you come... In many ways, you know, all the fire did for the Hebrew boys was to cleanse their faith and polish their courage. Many years ago, the story was told of a man who took his son 
to work with him one day. And let me say it, fathers, if you have the time, now and then you must take your sons with you to work. So they would get to know where you work, how hard you work to support them. So this man was excited, his only son. He took him to work. And uh, the man's job was to press the button. The train tracks would come in and the boats would pass. And when the train, when the train is coming, then he's going to press the button. The tracks is going to extend. And then the train would go by. For somehow he was not paying attention to his son. But I want us to understand when he looked at his time, it was time to lay down the tracks for the train. But when he looked at the tracks, he saw his only boy. He had to make a decision within a split second. Whether he should allow his son press the button and crush his son and allow the track to be extended. So that the train can pass with thousands of people. He took the decision to touch the button. And he saw the railings crush his son to death. So he ran over to the train station and he knocked at the train and he said, You didn't know what I just did. I have just given my son's life. To save your life. Nobody listened to him. Some fellas came out puffing their cigarette. Some men came out with other men's wife in their arms. Some women came out with other, men's, other women's husband in their arms. Some came out drunk. Over 2,200 plus years ago. Our heavenly father had to make a decision. This world, because of sin, if it continues without the Savior, every single human being will be lost. But God decided to save this world. And God had to do something. His son was on the line. And the only one who can save this dying world is his son. For without the shedding, innocent shedding of the blood of Jesus, there is no remission for sin. And he touched that button and crushed his son in Calvary so that you and I can be saved. What a God we serve today. You and I can trust him. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If we can't trace him, just trust him. God is going to come up. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the story in Daniel chapter 3. That three men stood for what was right. And you stood up for them. Not only you were able to get to the heart of Nebuchadnezzar, and Nebuchadnezzar declared that these men, God, deserve our worship. And everything moved from his image to the image of the true and living God. Dear God, the message got to the king's heart. And he delivered the message to all of the people who were on the plain of Judah. We thank you for your power. We give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. In no other name we pray, but the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Online viewers, what a message this evening. Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego simply obeyed God. The outcome of their courageous decisions laid with God 
So that is where they left it. Online viewers, don't make excuses for wrong choices. Like these young men have the courage to do what's right. Know that God is pleased with your obedience and trust him to work out the best for the situation. Now, we have come to the end of the program, but before I go, I will share some announcements with you. Join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m. and also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. Zoom ID 874-9040-9700. Passcode 013803. Using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Remember Pastor's Corner at 11.30 a.m. and the read broadcast will be at 8 p.m. Youth Live Unplug on Friday at 7 p.m. Sabbath morning services at 9 a.m. followed by the Sabbath afternoon service at 4 p.m. And join us next Sunday at 7 p.m. on Mission Live Grenada as we continue our journey through the book of Daniel. And we will be looking at Daniel chapter 4. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the program tonight, teaching us that we need to put all our trust in you no matter what, and you will always come true for us. Thank you for your word this evening, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will be the online viewers, that they will take it in their hearts, and they will also share it with someone out there. Thank you, Lord, for your protection. Thank you for always being there for us. Continue to cover us with your blood and protect us. Help us to share all about the series to our family, friends, and neighbors. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everyone, and may God bless you. We have been called to follow Christ. We are to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips, by your strength, I will go. I will go. In all the nations, in all the world